Hi. <laughs> Hi. Dub here, and today we have a new episode in the art review series. And today we'll be checking out the work of Alvaro Castagne. Um, he's actually a traditional watercolor painter, and I think his work he's, his work needs to be addressed. And the reason why is because he's actually one of the he's a very influential artist in my life. I remember back in college, I was into architectural types of illustrations and I found, I stumbled upon his work because in a lot of architectural stuff or like art, watercolors are a thing more than say oil or pastels, maybe a bit of gouache, but watercolors are fairly easy enough or they're more available, I guess. So it's a, a solid medium of choice, painting or il illustration medium. Aside from markers, like alcohol-based markers, watercolors have always been a staple in that um, field or industry. Now what attracted me, what attracted me to Alvaro Castanier's work is he's very bold. I mean, yes, impressionistic. You can feel the impression of his pieces, but he's it, more than that, I think. In a way, it's, it's much simpler, but it's way bolder. And I don't think anyone else does it like he does. He's kind of his own thing. And I think he did revolutionize. Is that a big word? <laughs> Watercolors. Like, I, like the way, if you look at this, for example, just the, the general body or his body of work, it seems like he's not afraid to use blacks or uh, really dark values. In watercolor, it's not usually supposed to be done using really dark values or pretty much close to black it's kind of a no-no maybe for an ink wash maybe you're doing some kind of fashion illustration and you're playing around with in i think it's called india ink sometimes i'll see them use some black like really dark values but their painting style is very minimalistic so that's kind of a different thing but for complete scenes like this it's very beautiful and it really got me hooked into his work and again he's, he's also very bold like you can see the like it's just way bolder like it it's not like there's so much confidence in the way he does his paintings and uh, I, uh, I think he really did influence me to I guess be more artsy and uh, let's just go and pick up a, a few of my favorites for example this guy I mean it's not very detailed if you zoom in but it's not meant to be zoomed in I mean actually in a way you're meant to zoom in too but beforehand, obviously, you see the whole thing and you can feel the passion or the, the energy of the place. And I think it's because of the way he does his lighting and he has a lot of contrast in his work. Clearly, there's a lot of like black in the thing, washed out dark values. And the, sometimes he'll leave the paper, the original white paper in. So I think that's very cool. But if you zoom in, it, even if it's not detailed, like super rendered, it still has that artsy feel. And it makes you want to just look like, ooh, look at that brush. And sometimes it feels deliberate in a way. And it feels masterful. Kind of like John Singer Sargent. He's a classical, traditional painter from, I don't know, centuries, ancient times <laughs> back. But uh, yeah, like, like look at the energy of this scene. It seems like a smaller painting, but uh, well, he does use a big brush, a really fat, like... <laughs> brush and he has a, a wonderful accent by the way if you check out you know, like videos of, of him on youtube uh, of alvaro he has a very interesting accent very attractive accent very attractive <laughs> um it, it's, it's so exotic like it makes me want to listen to him you know he should probably do a podcast and um, he does have a lot of uh dvds i think um associated with him like uh, tutorial or class dvds so you can always check that out. But the, the point is, look at how the figures are not that detailed, the car, um, the buildings, but it seems correct. It seems there. And I think that's what's so interesting. Like he talks about putting in the feelings or trying to communicate the feeling you have into your painting. And I think it does it really well. I mean, yeah, the, the feelings of uh, of the artist, but also the, the feeling or the energy of, of the place. I mean, look at these bold brushstrokes. It seems kind of messy or, but it doesn't, I mean, th that's the assumption if you were to do this 
on its own like for example these black marks but altogether it seems correct like it isn't supposed to be done in any other way and i think that's super cool and he's very consistent which i do like like imagine a portfolio of this kind of consistency i mean look at this it's a, a play on negative space so a lot of like black and then some white space here uh, he just worked on the on the shadow parts and then he left a lot of like white here and uh, he loves red for his signatures and the red light for you know some lamp posts or the, the the lights behind the car rear headlights and uh, it's a very complimentary color or oh, shit not complimentary it's accentual is that a word it's an accent color it adds a bit of oomph and he does this a lot for example for uh where is the word where is it like it's mostly black and white but there's going to be a like one area where it's just heavy on something in this case it's yellow and you can tell it's uh it's sunset i believe or sun sunrise sunset but you can feel like the, the heat the warmth of this um light and maybe that's what he wants you to focus on like right now what really pulls him in perhaps i'm guessing is this light this yellow sunset slash sunrise height uh light and um, maybe he likes the way the, all all these bicycles are kind of together maybe they're parked and people are like it's, it's a somewhat slow somewhat busy scene uh scene but he wants you to, to focus on this area and the accent color would have to be like blue here here uh, but look at how the buildings are done the the, the light posts very essential brush strokes not a lot of wasteful it, it yeah it's kind of not clean per se but it's it's where it's supposed to be <laughs> it's hard to explain it but it just works and i think I, I like i want this in my own work too this passion for example this piece he does a lot of these where he'll p paint like the um is it a tarp uh, or big umbrellas and they're usually color color red it really pulls you in very strong contrast you don't usually see this in watercolor and i think that's what makes him stand out amongst every other col uh, watercolor artists because when you see when you think watercolor you think like really light washes like built up for him he'll do like a wash of the sky perhaps or the ground or maybe the building and then he'll just start adding in some really strong uh, dark values and he's not afraid to use somewhat saturated uh colors red green blue now this one is uh, it seems smaller but why does it like the lighting seems correct and it's like uh afternoon like the, the sun is pretty high but you can feel it like it's somewhat moving or it's somewhat energetic because there's a lot of people it's very busy so you can give the impression of the place without having to go into much detail and i think his focus is communicating the feeling of the the area the environment and even his own feelings perhaps who knows uh, maybe in the way he paints sometimes he'll go tighter sometimes he'll go more ballsy like not ballsy but uh like really loose sometimes he's a bit more deliberate i mean look at this there's almost like a split in between like everything here is dark and everything here is lighter but in the middle right right here there's way more contrast like th th there's contrast here and here but there's also contrast here between these umbrellas and these people there's, there's even a cast shadow here of this entire um i guess building but also this um tarp thing it's very it's very solid like it, it just stays there like you don't move around the painting as much i mean you can but it doesn't have to do anything like you don't even have to think when you look at his paintings you know and you want that too i mean look at this again with the yellow damn look at this oh his signature is blue this time it's amazing very like i really want this in my own work but how who knows it's, it's like dabbing the paint in and it seems like he's floating above the page and i'm trying to i'm trying to think of this concept like if you see alvaro paint it seems like he whenever he like paints with his brush obviously he's not very like into the painting he kind of stays away from it a bit and the way he holds his brush he holds it usually at the end like he's not very attached i mean i think that's very important and uh it gives you freedom in a way because if you're too attached to something sometimes it like the thing you're trying to work on is it runs away from you maybe it's scared of yours or something but having that distance having that 
detachment, having that space in between, a healthy amount of space, I think it's very, it can help you be more free. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you can understand what I'm saying, but like floating away, like being just beyond the painting without having to really like dive deep and work on the details and just seeing the bigger picture and focusing on what needs to be said. Not everything that should be said, but like what needs to be said. Because when you think about shoulds, like you're, you're supposed to work on your silhouettes, you're supposed to work on your the details, your textures. Like, the, I mean, yeah, there are so many shoulds, but shoulds are based on different people's. There, there are way more shoulds than there are needs. Ooh, wow. <laughs> I sound like a philosopher. Um, But yeah, I mean, look at this. You're supposed to put a silhouette, but the the silhouette of the building is an impression. It's a very, like, you can't even see the freaking edge. Like, sometimes he'll do this for the buildings or background buildings. You can tell it's a building, but he doesn't do the whole edge thing. He'll do a wash, so it's very soft looking, but... And then he'll do... He'll skip the the, uh, the detail, uh, the, the silhouette edge. And then he'll just um, add window details. For example, this one. Like, the edge is hardly seen. And then he'll add some, like, windows and shit. And that's it. Beautiful painting. I want this. I need this for me. <laughs> so hopefully you check this guy out. I, re I really recommend... Alvaro Castañé, and he's a very influ he's, he is an influential artist to many people, to many artists, but definitely for me. Even though I don't do traditional paintings, I actually did a study of him before of one of his like boat scenes, and it actually looked like his painting. And because I saw him paint in like a video, and the way he was just he was not afraid of like painting. It seemed like he was very bold and ambitious and just passionate, and he made me want he, like he painted and he made me want to paint and I did paint like that's a very powerful artist can an artist make you want to do what he does so this guy is definitely a an artist that you must check out and I hope you enjoy his work uh, I will link all of the links in the description below I'll see you soon